Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. As much as I try best to cover the development of Star Citizen, my continued love for tech and gear also has my attention. I always appreciate it when a company reaches out allowing me to evaluate the cutting edge of technology for you. Now, there have been some of you who have asked why I don't cover more entry-level gear, and the answer is very simple. With game controllers, everyone already knows that the T16000M is the best budget starting point. When investing anything over entry level, it's important to me that I bring you the facts before you commit. This is why I focus towards gear that I do and why I continue to seek interesting products to talk about. With that background out of the way, I am both proud and excited to welcome you to my hands-on review, overview and impressions of this brand new gimbal from Verpal. Let's begin. The MT50 was Verpal's original gimbal. When it came out, Verpal reached out to me because they were sure that this would replace my custom dual Warthogs. I thought that the Warthog gimbal was good until I used the MT50. They then released their second, which is Warbird. Warbird's a simple design, low profile, with double cams. MT50 was phased out, and Warbird isn't suited for the use of extension collars. The updated MT50CM, being reviewed today, is then the true successor to the original, incorporating those features to fill in the gap. The parcel arrived with each gimbal in a box, in a box, boxed together. Verpal's addressed my original shipping concerns from earlier reviews. The current packaging ensures that the product will arrive safe, despite any abuse the shipping company may have applied to the parcel. In the box you get the gimbal with a mounting adapter pre-applied, a long USB cable with quick disconnect, three extra sets of cams for a total of four, because one's installed, two extra sets of springs for a total of three as one is installed, a quick start guide, and a cam reference guide. Externally, my initial impressions are that it looks like an MT50 and a Warbird gimbal had a baby. It's significantly heavier and physically larger than the Warbird. The gimbal body is solid, and I was very happy to see that the mounting solution threads through and into the inner structure. This is important when considering the types of torque loads needed to use longer extensions. I haven't yet tested Verpal's updated mounting solution, but they seem very similar to their version 1, and I have that video up for you here. The mounting point is a 28mm by 11mm pattern, using the same arrangement as the original MT50. This means that anything that was designed to work with the original will work off of this. Here you can see the new CM mounted to MonsterTech desk mounts using the legacy MT50 adapter. It has the same universal mount, which means that you can mount all Verpal and Thrustmaster grips. If you're currently using a Warthog, your upgrade path is actually more economical, as you can repurpose your current grip. The top of the gimbal has two rubber caps covering your tension adjustment screws. The front of the gimbal has two connectors, one marked USB and one marked auxiliary. Auxiliary slaves Verpal devices together, and I'm going to do a video on that once the pedals and MFD panels are released. The quick disconnect on the wiring is a major upgrade if your desk is where you game. Being able to unplug and keep the wiring tidy saves a lot of time. I also feel that it's safer as any damaged wires can be swapped out easily without a full teardown. The lower cover is held on by four bolts. These four bolts give you full access to the internals for adjustment and cam swapping. There's a very detailed video linked up right now that fully explains the fine tuning of these gimbals. Internally, the MT50CM is a tank with heavy bearings and milled aluminum. The cams are held in place by a pair of Allen bolts and are now inverted when compared to the original MT50. Not only does this reduce the overall height of the gimbal, but it also makes cam changes very simple. Delicate parts and wires can remain detached and intact throughout any processes. Many pilots like to achieve a more realistic feel, and to do this it's often important to add extensions. These require a lot more force so that the extra length doesn't overwhelm the return system. When testing Warbird, I found extensions quickly overwhelmed the gimbal, even if I had the stiffest springs installed. With MT50CM, this isn't an issue. The internal structure is beefy for a reason. Tension is adjusted quickly from the top with a flathead screwdriver. If you fail to achieve the right torque, in a matter of minutes you can install a stronger or weaker spring to taste. Changing cams will also alter how the torque is applied. Once again, this is fully explained in the second video. So who did they make this gimbal for, and is it better than Warbird? If you have Warbird and you're happy, there's no need to consider the MT50CM as an upgrade. This isn't a solution where one is better than the other. One is lower profile with dual cams, and the other one is built to provide the torque needed to run extensions. 
Both track like butter, with thousands of points of data throughout each axis range. Their contactless sensor reads the position without relying on mechanical contact, ensuring a lifetime of precise service. I've enjoyed testing extensions while putting the new gimbals through their paces, which is something that Warbird can't do. Adjustments on the fly is a nice feature, which can save upfront time when doing initial tuning. Including all the cams and springs is definitely the right way to go because it's expected that you're going to spend time adjusting and testing to get the feel that you want. I love it when a company is so proud of their product that the inside is actually prettier than the outside. I was very happy to see the addition of a metal plate to keep the wire separate from all moving parts. This demonstrates some engineering evolution over the original design. And if you have any experience with MT50, there's no problematic thread lock anywhere to impede you. So I'll close out with my observations. I spent over an hour messing around with the software, and I'm going to mention this only to save you time. I have a Corsair K65 keyboard, and apparently its software and the setup software from Verpal don't like each other. I ended up using a second PC to install firmware and calibrate. Verpal tech support on the forums was very quick to reply. I can't give you any feedback on the long-term use because I've only had them for about 12 hours in flight. Initially, as I said, they're a tank, with all the wires tucked out of the way. There are no red flags that stand out. So now I've tested every single gimbal in this price range. They all offer very similar motion and tracking. They work fine without extensions, but I really appreciate the fact that the MT50CM is ready for them. So that's it. Thank you very much for spending your time with me and thank you to Verpal for allowing me to test new gear for you. I'm going to run them both on MTX Simrig seated and standing at my main rig. Please stay tuned because I'm going to talk about the software and my final cam and spring choices after my testing. Ask any questions you have in the comments, fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.